Let me ask you this. I'm not going to keep you very long. You said preachers always say that, but they usually don't live by it. Uh, I must well keep you to 2 o'clock because that's when we start eating, right? <laughs> no. I wasn't going to keep you to 2 o'clock. How many people remember what they were doing on 9 11 10 years ago? When you heard, I think it was 8 46 and then 9 03 when the planes. Now let me ask you another question. How many people remember what they were doing 12 7? Somebody got to scratch your head and think a minute. Not many hands are going to go up. That's December 7th, 1941. How many people were around here? Uh, some of you were around here. How many remember? Do you, do you remember? Were you old enough to remember what you were doing? Chuck was here. Every, every generation, it seems, it seems that every generation has its defining moment. 12-7, December 7th, was Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. We were launched into a war, a world war, that lasted about four years and cost hundreds of thousands of lives. I don't know what the, the death toll was from World War II. But it was a war that when they were launched into it, they knew who their enemies were. Nations, leaders who had risen up and who attempted to gain world power, world domination. You know, man had been doing that for a long time. Ever since the Tower of Babel, there had been somebody on this earth trying to, trying to run the place without God. Uh, in, Ten years ago on 9-11, we were launched into a, a conflict, not against, not against uh, a nation, but against an ideal against uh, a religion. And even though they don't want to say that, they're afraid to say that, yet that's what it is. And actually, when you think about it, all these war, when, when you go back to World War II and even what we're fighting today, it's all about an ancient argument over who gets the land. It really is the same thing. In World War II, there was a madman that wanted to eliminate a nation. Today, there are madmen who want to eliminate a nation. And it's all over a little strip of land over there on the end of the Mediterranean Sea. They'll try to tell you different. They'll try to tell you it's something else, but it, 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 that's all it is. It's a land dispute. And uh, I, I, I was thinking, and as Pastor Todd has shared a little bit, and when I remember, I remember 9-11, and I remember the message I preached, that was, it was a Tuesday, and I preached the message that Sunday, I remember the message I preached, some of you might have been here for that. The message was, you know, at that time, everybody was saying, God bless America, all the congressmen and senators were standing on the steps, God bless them, half of them don't even believe in God, but they were singing it, all 500 and however many, many of them there and uh, they had God Bless America on bar rooms and everywhere. Everybody had God Bless America. It lasted about six months. And then it stopped. And I remember the message. I got a copy of it somewhere. I said, does America bless God? God's not going to bless America until America starts blessing God. And something I have seen in the last ten years, things have not changed for the better. Things haven't changed for the better. Morally, economically, we're getting ready to declare bankruptcy. We've got states legalizing gay marriage. They didn't hear. They didn't get the message. They haven't gotten the message over the last 10 years. Every time the flood comes, and every time a hurricane comes, and God's been allowing these things to happen over and over again, and nobody's getting the message. At least nobody that counts when it comes to our government. It's natural disasters. They keep, just like ancient Israel did, they kept on, they kept on banging their head against the walls thinking they were going to, they were going to outdo God. God bless America. He's going to bless America. It says he loves those he chastens. I would love to stand here and tell you, oh, God's doing a great work in America. Well, he is but not the way we like to think about it. The scripture that 
we talked about that time and what we sang in the song comes of course from Second Chronicles. And let's just, just turn there. It's one that we hear every every time we have a national day of prayer, every time we get together and of course chapter seven and verse fourteen. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land we've heard that so often so often preached and taught and expounded upon but there's stuff around that see people want to seek God for his healing but they don't want to listen to what God has to say about why this stuff is going on. God cannot bless a nation that revels in sin. Can't do it. He won't do it. If you back up just a little bit and look at starting at verse 12. Now, now if you, if you put this in context, Solomon We've all heard of King Solomon. Built the temple. And Solomon had a daddy named David. And David had a heart to build a temple for God. And God wouldn't allow him because David had blood on his hands. So you're a bloody man. So God rose up his son Solomon. And Solomon built the temple. When he built the temple, they had a big dedication service. You can read about it. I mean, they had... It was, they had a party going on dedicating that temple. And the Holy Spirit came and just knocked, knocked everybody. Everybody got slain in the spirit. Boom, right? That because the Holy Spirit filled the place up with smoke. Bam, it was. And Solomon prayed. And it says in verse 12, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I've heard your prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Then he says this. If I shut up heaven. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute, God. Wait a, minute. wait a second. You like the temple? You like, you know, you blessed us. You sent your spirit. You're happy, right? You got the temple. You built the temple. You're happy. God says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the, devocus, the, the locust to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. You mean, God, you might do that to your own people? He promised He would. Everybody likes to claim the promises of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's a good promise. There's some good promises of God. You know, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Great promises. I love those promises. I love to quote them promises. You know. But how about the promise that says, if you don't do my word, <laughs> I'm going to send... And you know, he gave that promise too. He says, if you don't do what I tell you to do, you'll be cursed. If you do what I say, you'll be blessed. If you don't do what I say, you'll be cursed. Nobody quotes that promise. I'll be the head, not the tail. Uh, yeah, that's a good promise. He says, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, is it at all possible, can we just imagine for a second that the things we've been seeing going on in our nation over the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years, is God trying to wake up a nation? God trying to wake up a people. God trying to tell us, don't, don't kick me out of your school. Don't kick me out of your life. Don't kick me out of your government. Make, you know, in God we trust. Mean that. We don't mean it. God says, you honor me with your lips, but your heart's far from me. The United States of America. I'm glad I live in the United States. But I can remember when we, when we had that, when that happened back in, uh, ten years ago, I preached that message 
my sister Lori Lanham, she, she made up a, a picture. I was going to get a copy and put it up, but I, I didn't. It was an American flag and it had Jesus crying. And it's, it didn't say, God bless America, it said, God bless America. Because we become, become a nation, not one nation under God, but we become a, a, a nation that says, one nation with no God. And that's why, that's why in one part of the land there's so much water that bridges and homes are being washed away, and in another part of the land there's so little water that the whole place is catching fire. Somebody said, well, that's just nature. It's God's hand. I believe it's God's hand. And I believe that this great land that we live in, and I thank God I'm an American, I think we got liberty, we got freedom. I pray every day for our valiant soldiers who are fighting overseas wars that, that they don't know. That it doesn't look like there's an end. But I wonder where we're at on, on God's scale. Whether, I don't know if we've passed over that line that says reprobate. I don't know. I know one thing, it's not, if God wanted us to know, he would tell us, he hasn't told us, we're still supposed to pray. And we're still supposed to witness. And we're sp still supposed to do all those things that Jesus told us to do. Let's read a little bit more here at this passage. And I promise I'm not going to keep you past 2 o'clock. my people in verse 14, and we've read it, let's read it again, which are called by my name shall humble themselves. We don't like to humble ourselves, do we? We don't like to humble ourselves. We like to be proud. Especially America. I think Americans have a, have a uh, reputation for being for pride. If you ever read the story of the pilgrims that came here, uh, Plymouth Rock, up in Massachusetts. They're probably the only group of people that came to this land that were truly humble. They humbled themselves in front of God. They fasted and prayed when they got here. And when they suffered so much, they recognized God's hand. I don't know if any, anybody, uh, any other group that came here, that settled here, had that kind of, that kind of fervor they humbled themselves. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. We're really, we're really good at seeking God's face. Every time you need something, every time we need something, we seek God's face. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Hit the old, you know, the ATM machine. This celestial. Put the right numbers in there. Out comes the stuff. They'll pray and seek my face. And all this, this part, we want to, give me a black magic marker so we can, like this laughing. And turn from their wicked. Well, we don't have any wicked ways. This is 2011. This is an ancient Israel. We're advanced now. We're cosmopolitan. We have, we have an understanding of of what, you know, alternative lifestyles. We have choices that we make as individuals. You know, don't tell me what to do and God made me this way and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> nothing wrong with me. Might be something wrong with you, but ain't nothing wrong with me. You know, how many people have said this or heard this? They'll say, I, I recently, and I, I don't want to get into too much, but I recently had an occasion I had to go and testify at a preliminary hearing. I, I saw a couple kids carrying a flat screen TV down the alley. <laughs> so I just figured it was my duty to call 911. And uh, anyway, at the, at the hearing, uh, the hearing didn't happen because they like waved the court, but I was sitting in the magistrate's office, and the kid's mom was there. He's like an 18-year-old kid. And I went over to her, and I said, you know, I said, we're praying for your son. We're praying for your son. I didn't know if she would, like, throw a brick at me or because I called. But she started crying. 
And she said, she said, he's a good boy. He just got caught up with some of the wrong crowd. And I thought to myself, if you went to every mother of every one of those kids that he got caught up with, they would say the same thing. See, the, the truth is, here's what the Bible says. Nobody's good. I'm not good. Somebody say, he's a good man. I'm not good. Deep down inside, my heart is wicked above all things. Without Jesus Christ, I'm wicked. I'm evil. If you don't have Jesus Christ, the Bible says you are lost and on your way to hell. You're not good in God's eyes. People might, you might look like you're good. Maybe people will think you're good, but the way God sees you, you're not good. Your ways are wicked. Before I was a believer, my ways were wicked. And I deserve nothing but hell. Before the blood of Jesus Christ washed me from my sins, he says, turn from your wicked... The first thing we need to do is understand is we have wicked ways. Our nation is in the state of sin because of wickedness. Because we've done wicked stuff. And until they turn from it, God's blessing isn't going to come. Turn from their wicked ways, then, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. I'll listen. I'll listen. If you really mean what you're saying. You can go to God and talk all you want to. And think, you know, you can fool, you can fool your, your wife, you can fool your husband, you can fool your kids, you can fool your parents, but you sure ain't going to fool him. He says, I'm listening. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And... As for thee, if you, if you will walk, that big if, that's a little word, but it's big. If you will walk before me as David your father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded you, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of your kingdom according as I have covenanted with David your father. There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But, oh, can we stop? If you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them. And this house which I shall have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house which is high shall be an astonishment to everyone that passes by it, so that he shall say, Why has the Lord done this unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered, Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt. Now, I want to just take this and make it personal. See, there's only so much I can do about what goes on in Washington, D.C., you know, they have an election every couple of years, and you can go vote and not vote. And whatever. It seems lately, everybody I voted for had won. <laughs> and that's okay. There have been a few I just haven't even bothered voting because I don't like any one of them. That's okay, too, by the way. There's some folks say, you always got to vote. You don't have to vote if there's nobody to vote for. That's what I feel, anyway. But there's only so much I can do about what goes on down in Washington, D.C., the only person I can do anything about is this one right here. I can't do nothing for you. I can tell you what this says because that's what God tells me to do. And I can encourage you if we get together and pray and talk and I can encourage and give godly, hopefully godly advice and all that. But the only one I'm really responsible for is this one right here. This is the temple God gave me. The Bible says our bodies are what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. We're responsible as individuals for taking this word, even as that, that video that fellow was preaching, taking this word and applying it to this. I can't apply this word to you. I can't. I'd like to sometimes. 
<laughs> I like to apply this. <laughs> you know, you like to. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> I can only apply it to me. You can only apply it to you. Now, we live in the United States of America. We have citizenship in the United States of America. Every one of us have different ethnic backgrounds, different heritage that we celebrate. But my real citizenship is in heaven. The day I became a born-again Christian, my name got written in the Lamb's Book of Life, so I'm listed there. So I, I try to obey the laws here best I can. Well, most of the time. And if I disobey the laws here, if I run a red light and a cop sees me, guess what? He's going to give me a ticket, maybe. He might let me go. They've let me go a few times. But not that I do it a lot now, you know. But God's law, he doesn't blink. He doesn't blink. He can't be bought off. He demands... He demands obedience. I want to challenge you this morning as we prepare to close our service. And I'm so thankful that we've been, been able to have this blessing service for Sister Shana. But my message to every one of us and to myself is, do you bless God? Do you bless God? Our nation hasn't in a long time. As a nation... But do you bless God? The only way we can bless Him is by being obedient to His Word. The Apostle Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to Him, which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind we might not be able to effect a lasting change in our nation but oh God I pray that you would bring a lasting change in us that while America might not bless God I want to bless God and if it causes me to fall out of favor with this nation that I'm, I'm, I'm a citizen of, so be it. My citizenship in heaven. I want to bless God. I want to lift up the name of Jesus. But when I can, when they tell me I can, and when they tell me I can't, I don't care what it is. I want to be a believer. I want to be a witness. I want to be an evangelist. I want to do what God has told He said, go into all the world. He said, the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. How many people are willing to lay their lives on the line for Christ? Make yourself a living sacrifice. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. On this 9-11 today, 10 years, when they flew into the buildings and Flew, flew into the Pentagon and where the heroes on flight 43 stopped wherever they were headed. Perhaps the Capitol building, perhaps the White House. We don't know. They laid their lives down. Are you willing to lay your life down? There's this, one of the songs we sang about those who were willing to die for freedom. Are you willing to die to yourself this 9-11 as we remember those, those brave people as we remember our soldiers who are, who are fighting for us even right now are you willing to be a soldier of the cross this morning are you willing to lay it all down if you're not listen if you're not willing to, there's an old saying if you're not willing to stand for something you'll fall for anything my god that's happened look what's happened look what's happened in, in in the last 10 years look look at what has happened in the churches in the last 10 years they want to take the crosses out they want to reinterpret 
Well, we can't. We got. We got to. We got to bring this up to date. This is as up to date as ever going to be. They want to reinvent Christianity. You know what? We don't have to reinvent anything. The other night I showed. Uh, we were watching. We had a little message here about uh, the battles that we face from Second Peter scoffers, mockers. I showed a, a clip of a fella who was complaining that God didn't do a very good job in creating us. Some of you, some of you saw that when we were. They said, "Well, you know, God could have done a better job." Fool. God created everything exactly the way He wanted it, and He said it was good. What happened to it? Sin. I want to ask you to challenge you this morning as we close. How many are willing to be a living sacrifice to the Lord? How many are willing to lay down everything? What will it cost a man? What, what will it cost you? The early believers lost, some of them lost everything. Even believers say, there's more martyrs today than there has ever been in the history of the church in the world. And we want to take the crosses out of the churches. And we, want to, we don't want to talk too much about sin because it makes people kind of feel funny. We don't want to make them feel guilty. You know, I don't want to make anybody feel guilty, but I want this to convict as many people. When you start talking about this thing, it'll make you feel bad about yourself. Because it lets you know just how wicked your heart is. Oh, we don't like that. I don't like to admit that. I don't want. To. I'm a good person. No, you're not. Not in God's eyes. I'm going to ask you this morning. We're going to pray. We're going to close. And again, I encourage you all. Two o'clock, we're going to have lunch. Please stick around or come back. Or you're welcome to come back, Father. We live in a nation that has turned its back, officially pronounced you illegal in school. It has officially pronounced you illegal in government functions. Even as Pastor Todd said, they'll talk about God and they'll talk about holy ground, and they'll talk about all this stuff, but they don't want to say that, that J word. Oh, that makes people so angry. But that's the name. There is no other name by which we can be saved. There's no other name under heaven. There's no other name in the universe. There is no other name in all of creation or outside of creation by which we can be saved other than the name of Jesus. And Father, this nation, this great nation we live in, that we love, it might outlaw your name, but your name is not outlawed in this temple. In fact, your name is the reason why this temple is here. I pray, Lord, that we would stand firm and no matter what gets thrown at us by the enemy through our government or through our neighbor, wherever it might come, we will stand firm on what your word says. And I pray that we as a people will humble ourselves and pray and will turn from our wicked ways. And I pray, Lord, and I believe your word says that if we do that, you're going to hear our prayers. If we turn from our wicked ways and turn from the evil that we've done and turn from the foolishness we've allowed ourselves to get caught up in, Father, I believe that you'll hear from heaven and you'll heal our land. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, this land of the United States of America might be too far gone, but Father, this temple that is dwelling here, I'm not too far gone. These ones sitting in these pews, these temples dwelling in this, in this house, they're here for a reason. They're not too far gone. I pray, Lord, that you would allow your spirit to be uh, manifested in our lives in a very new and powerful way. It's the power of God unto salvation. To the Jew first and to the Greek. Won't you stand with me, please? Oh, beautiful for spacious skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountains 
majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed His grace on Crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining. Father, we cry out for our nation today. We cry out for our nation today, Father. Oh God, heal this land. Father, there are those in leadership, Father, who is far from you. We pray for the salvation of those who govern our nation. We pray that they would get saved in the name of Jesus. We pray that there would be a revival of your spirit in our nation. We pray that you would take the gay ones and convince them of the error of their ways. We pray that you would take the, the users and the drug dealers, that by the power of your Holy Spirit there would be conviction, that they would turn from their wicked ways. God, we pray that there would be a Holy Ghost revival in our nation where people would be uh, changed and made new and made holy and made righteous in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, we don't just want something that's going to be a, an outward thing, but we want to see changes made in our nation. We pray for our city of New Kensington that has been decimated by sin. We pray for our city of Arnold that has been decimated by sin and corruption. We pray, Lord, there would be righteousness. We pray for our neighborhoods where there are shootings and lootings and robbery and drug dealing and pornography. We pray, Lord, that righteousness would reign in this neighborhood, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we give you glory, Father. And all God's children said, Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Father, that everybody within the sound of my voice, every family represented here, that the Spirit of God would rest, rule, and reign in our houses, that our loved ones would be saved, that our children would be saved, that our, our drug-addicted children would be delivered, that our children have been touched with uh, abuse and molestation would be healed and delivered in the name of Jesus. Because you're able, God, that the scars that are left by uh, uh, bad upbringings will be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, that you'll touch the, the, the adults and tell, show them how to raise kids. Touch children and show them how to respect their parents in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. As we go from this place. Hallelujah, but not your presence. Hallelujah. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trans.